what I got at the store. Oh, it lights up, but you have to plug it in, and it has a very short cord, so that's not very helpful. Um, but it's, I, I got a little marquee, and I was just kind of lucky that the three films I showed this week all neatly fit on here. You can kind of see I've, like, squished the devils together, but that's actually been helping because Freaks and Baby Doll keep sliding around and the devil stays right in place. I probably won't be doing that every week because the the movies I'm recommending this week have some very long titles that will not fit on that. I also got a new light for recordings, but I like to damn near burn my retinas out with it, so I think we're going to save that for just like Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show and stuff. You know, this this show's not really about the visuals. I'm I'm not gonna turn the light on for this. Because god damn it's bright. God damn it hurts my eyes. So last time it was banned films week, and I recommended some uh movies that have been banned, you know. Um <laughs> starting with just one of my favorite movies of all time. I bet you can't tell I bought a t-shirt of it. Ken Russell's The Devils. I, I got this from the same people that did the uh, Sallow shirt I was wearing last time. Um, I got both because I, I prefer The Devils. I, I actually like The Devils. I don't actually like Sallow that much. But Sallow is a lot funnier to me, so... I got both. I got Sallow and The Devils. The Devils just to rep and Sallow because I thought it was funny. Also, I like the design of Sallow a little better because I'm not totally sure what this is a reference to. I think I think one of the Ant-Man movies, but maybe one of like the TV shows. I don't know, maybe it's just a Marvel-looking font. Ken Russell's The Devils is the true story of... Uh, the, the Devils of Ludan, there was uh, a group of nuns in Ludan who, like, got possessed, and they kind of, like, worked together with this head bishop, and they kind of made it out like, uh, this, this one, like, bishop within, the, the, the head bishop of the city of Ludan was, like, the one responsible for the possessions just so they could kind of push him out and destroy Ludan. Because <laughs> they, they wanted to, like, bulldoze Ludan and build stuff there, and they needed him out of the picture. So they worked together with these nuns and were kind of like, hey, pin it on him. He's, he's the one that uh, possessed all of you. Which uh, was a pretty easy claim to make, since he had quite a reputation for... A banging a lot of women, which he was not supposed to be doing as a priest, but he he did it anyway, so because he was doing that and because, you know, he, he was supposed to be supposedly like the super hot guy, they're like, oh, he's he's tempting us to um you know, rebel against Jesus. Um and, and the devils is a retelling of this real life event with uh, Oliver Reed as Mm, Father Grandier, Father Grandier, I fucking love Oliver Reed, and this is his best performance. This, cause, cause the character, like, fucking is Oliver Reed, right? I don't think anyone else could play this role. It had to be Oliver Reed, you know? <laughs> like, like this consummate professional that also just, like, does crazy shit in his off time. That's Oliver Reed. And plus, you know, he and Ken Russell were, like, long-time buddies. Uh, if you were gonna make- if Ken Russell was gonna make this movie, it had to be Oliver Reed. And so, yeah, he, he gets accused of, like, possessing these women, uh, like, satanic possession of these women- and uh, gets, you know, convicted and burned at the stake for it. Um, and that's, that's the movie. 
where do you even begin with the devils? There's a lot to talk about. I've actually, I've been reading, and when I say reading, I mean listening to the audiobook of... I deliver pizza. Pizza delivery is my real-life job, and so I have a lot of time to listen to audiobooks. Uh, I've been listening to the audiobook for... Raising Helkin Russell and the Unmaking of the Devils by Richard Krause. I haven't finished it yet, but it's... Uh, if if you want information on the Devils, it's, like, amazing. It's It's a really good read on this movie. The Devils is... Like, top ten most controversial films ever made. Like, like the controversy around this movie was, like, through the fucking roof, okay? Like, any conversation about, like, the most controversial movies of all time that does not include The Devils is severely lacking. Um, it was banned, like, so many places. And... I see why, and I don't see why. <laughs> like, um, unlike a lot of other banned movies, it's not particularly gross or, like, aggressively offensive in any way outside of just being kind of blasphemous. But even then, it's it's not... Like, like the story itself is not a blasphemous story. It's just characters within that story doing blasphemy. The thing I love about this movie is that it feels like sort of the last holdout of banned movies, right? Because it's still really hard to get. Like, it's not available on DVD or Blu-ray. It's not available, like, on Amazon Prime or... or YouTube or anything. Like, you, you can't just rent it. You can't just buy a copy of it. Occasionally, it'll pop up on a streaming service. Sometimes it'll pop up on Criterion. It, it was on the Criterion channel. It's been on Shudder. But when it appears on these sites, it's up for, like, a month, maybe two, and then it's gone. Like, you, you gotta watch it when it is on those streaming services. Or you just can't watch it legally legally i for one screen recorded it while it was up on shutter back in march it was on shutter back in march and i screen recorded it so i just i have a copy of it saved to my hard drive now not a great copy a, a sort of janky screen recorded copy but that's better than nothing this is it's not an easy movie to get your hands on so it, it feels like sort of the last holdout of banned movies. Even though technically it's not banned, it still feels like people are scared to approach it. Unlike, you know, Sallow or Cannibal Holocaust, which I have like super nice deluxe Blu-rays of, it, The Devils is still just sort of out there, just sort of never been released. Uh, on top of that, unlike Cannibal Holocaust or Sallow or, or these movies, they're just, you watch them and they're like slow and kind of gross and you're like, okay, I get why this was banned, but this is not like a particularly good movie. The Devils is fucking brilliant. The Devils is just like one of the best movies ever made. It is absolutely worth seeking out in spite of its reputation, in spite of how difficult it is to get a copy of it. Like, this is worth overcoming the ban for. Like, this is not an anticlimax. This is like, I have dug and dug and dug to try to get this controversial movie, and it's brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. This is, it was directed by Ken Russell, and I think it was probably the first Ken Russell movie I saw, but I am a big, big fan of Ken Russell. He, he also directed, uh, Tommy, the Who movie, Tommy, um, a handful of other good movies. Litstomania, I am a huge fan of, uh, Altered States, I haven't seen. It's on my list, I, I, I want to watch it though. 
Um, hmm, I'm forgetting something else. There's something else he directed that I, I'm, not, I'm not thinking of right now. Um, he actually did a lot of movies about famous composers, but then he, he would make, like, only partially accurate stories about composers. There was, like, a... a there was an idea about the composers that he wanted to make a movie about. It wasn't just like, here's what their lives were like. It's like, here is the idea of Franz Liszt. Here is the idea of... Oh, fuck. Who's the music lover lovers about? Shostakovich? Maybe? I, f I forget who the music lovers is about. But the, the music lovers, another one of his films that's just about uh, a composer. And there's like something really specific he's driving at with that movie. That's how we met Oliver Reed. He cast Oliver Reed as Jean-Claude Debussy, which... Great casting. <laughs> Oliver Reed really looks like Debussy. But, uh... And... Anytime Oliver Reed shows up in something, it's good casting. Except Tommy, actually. I would argue he's bad in Tommy. <laughs> but, um... Any other... Anytime he doesn't have to sing, it's, it's, he's worth seeing. I love Oliver Reed. And I love Ken Russell. Uh, Ken Russell is just... He's one of my favorite directors, because he did not give a shit. He's just like, I'm, I'm gonna make the movies I want to make, and like... Fuck all y'all. I don't care what you think. <laughs> and and that's... That's the Devils, man. <laughs> the Devils is like... Because uh, right after the Devils, he made The Boyfriend, which is this very nice, gentle, like, throwback to early musical Hollywood. And he, he said, like, I made The Boyfriend... Just so people would know, like, look, I can make a normal movie, right? Like, because otherwise, the Devils might have tanked his career if he hadn't just, like, here's a very nice, simple movie. Here's a movie where I am not trying to say a lot. Calm down, I can make a normal movie. But he didn't. He, he rarely did. His style has this, like, weird rock and roll Catholicism to it. Um, and The Devils is definitely more on the Catholicism end. And then on the other end, you've got, like, Tommy, which is more rock and roll. But there's, like, religious imagery in Tommy. And there's, like, rock and roll stuff in The Devils. Um, in the middle there, you've got Litzdomania where fucking Ringo Starr plays the Pope. He's, he's just got this, like, wild sense of, like, like, the blending of rock and roll and religion that I really like, that I'm really into. I, I said I, I understand why there was backlash to the Devils, and I don't understand. There's a scene in the Devils where, like, you know, all of the possessed nuns are, like, rolling around naked in the church auditorium and, like, you know, rubbing themselves and then screaming uh, heresies, and it's like, okay, yeah, this is a fucking intense scene. It's also a sick-ass party. I don't want to get invited to more parties like that. But it's it's an intense scene, so I, I get why people were upset by even that scene in particular. Like, they there's not a lot in the movie I think you can get upset about, but that scene, it's like, okay, I, I understand why people were upset about this scene. But it's not like The Devils was unprecedented. This was like like early nunsploitation, but it, it feels like prior to The Devils, there was... There was Witchfinder General, and to an even greater extent, there was Mark of the Devil, which is a movie I love very dearly, and that I am going to have to talk about someday. Not as much as The Devil. I like The Devil's better than Mark of the Devil, but I really like Mark of the Devil. More than Witchfinder General, even, and Witchfinder General's, like, the popular one. Uh, but both of those movies, I feel like, and those came out, The, the Devil's was 71, Witchfinder General, I think, was 68, and uh, Mark of the Devil was 70. 
1970. So those two came out just right before The Devils. So I don't think The Devils was unprecedented, but where you can draw comparisons between those two films and The Devils, The Devils really does stand on its own. Like, there, there is obviously, there is obvious differences between The Devils and those movies. And, and of course, like, later non-sploitation, I would point to, like, a Satanico Pandemonium. That's, that's a really fun, interesting one. But it's kind of silly. It's not near as smart as The Devils. Like, there's an artistic layer to The Devils that is missing from... I, honestly, all three of those other films, all three of the other films I've mentioned, and really any other films in this genre, um, like, Ken Russell really had, like, first off, visually, like, he's got a really good eye for these things, but much like with his movies about the lives of, um, like, composers... Uh, the lives of musicians, there is a level of him just sort of, you know, ignoring reality and telling, like, the idea of this story. Granted, it's a lot more literal here than it usually is. There's not a lot of, like, anachristic stuff in this. He, he's not He's not going super surrealist or anything with this. Um, there are there are some weird dream sequences which are fun, but there there's not a whole lot that is just like obviously fake in this movie. A lot of it is a very literal telling, but there is a layer of like obviously this didn't happen. Obviously it didn't play out this way. We're just sort of taking the idea of what happened and telling that. Um, there's a scene in this movie where the king of France is supposed to be shooting birds. He was supposed to be shooting birds. That's what it was written as in the script. And for some reason, they couldn't actually have him shooting birds. So Ken Russell rewrote the scene to be him shooting Protestants dressed as birds. And so you have this guy in a bird costume, like, running around, and the, the King of France just fucking shoots him. He falls in a lake. I think it was the special effects guy who they, they shot and he fell into a lake. And it's just, it's just little things like that, where it's like, obviously the King of France wasn't actually shooting Protestants dressed as birds, but... That's the idea Ken Russell wants to convey about this story. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah, The Devils, it's... It's one of my favorite movies, man. Like, it's just it's just great. Um, I mean, I, I've recommended movies I like better than this before, but, like... This, uh, this one's real special to me. It's real special to me. I think in part because, like I said, it... It feels like the last holdout of banned films. So, like, there's that extra little layer of, like, I love this movie, and I'm not supposed to. This is a naughty movie. This is a movie I'm not supposed to be watching. But it is a movie I should be watching because it's brilliant. Anyway, that's me gushing about the devils. I could probably talk... Another 20-30 minutes about the Devils and how much I love the Devils, but I won't. I'll spare you, but, <laughs> like, this, I've, I've already talked, th this is probably gonna be, like, half the length of most episodes of this show, so I, I will try to move on now. <laughs> um, after the Devils, we watched... Baby Doll, which is a movie I, I was worried I might regret showing. I don't know that it was the best choice, but I, I'm not going to say I regret showing it, because I think it was decent enough. Um, it was a little more dramatic than I was expecting. I was expecting something a little looser. Honestly, 
Honestly, I was expecting something like Lolita, and it wasn't really anything like Lolita. Um, just just based on the, the title and premise alone. So the, the idea of the movie is like, this girl's father died when she was young, and this other guy agreed to marry her uh, on the condition that they wouldn't have sex until she turned 20, and it is the day before her 20th birthday. Um, so she's 19, so, like, I, I was worried this was gonna be, like, a pedophilia movie, the way Lolita is. Because I don't... This was banned in the United States. Baby Doll was. I don't think Lolita was banned in the States. I think Lolita went out without a hitch in the States. And I don't know why that would be. I don't know why this movie would get in trouble, but Lolita wouldn't. Because Lolita, she's underage. It's fucking illegal. In this movie, she's 19, which is above the age of consent. It's sketchy as fuck, but it's above the age of consent. And, you know, like, the premise is she's not having sex, right? She's not gonna have sex till she turns 20. I don't know why people were really upset by that. I looked into it. It seems like uh, a lot, like... Uh, I think one of the guys from the National Legion of Decency, which I just did a video on, he was all upset that, like, they talked so much about sex. There was too much sex talk in this movie, which, like, there is not that much sex talk in this movie. It is pretty fucking tame in terms of sex talk. He also he also said, oh, they used slurs. They, they said the n-word, and they said wop. And I'm like, it's the 1950s. I, I don't know how genuine you're being when you say you're upset about the slurs in this movie. And, and I mean, it, it's a movie from the 1950s. I think it's set even earlier. It seems like it's set, like, just post-Civil War. Like, I, I, like a, not too long after the Civil War. I might be wrong about that. It might have been set in the 50s. It's based on a play by Tennessee Williams. So it might be set when the play was written in, the, you know, before the 50s, like the 30s or 40s or something. But, yeah, I don't... <laughs> I, I, I don't understand why anyone in the 1950s would be like, Oh, I can't believe they used these racial slurs. Because it's not even like... They said them in a racist way. They said them in the way people in the 50s just said that shit. You know? Like, it was just okay to say that then. I mean, I, to be clear, it wasn't just okay to say it, but, like, some people would say it and not mean it in a derogatory way because that's just the word everyone used. Some people would. Some people would use it in a derogatory way, and that's why it's... Not really okay to say, but you know what I mean. You, you get me. I don't have to explain myself. So uh, it's the day before Baby. The main character's name is Baby. Of all the fucking names. She can go hang out with, you know, the main characters of Dirty Dancing and Baby Driver. Just have their own little baby gang. Um... So Baby, it's the day before Baby's 20th birthday, the day she's agreed to have sex with her husband, and there's this, like, big shot rich dude who lives in the town, and uh, he, he owns nearly everything except Baby's husband's farm, and he, he's been trying to buy it out for a while, but wouldn't you know, the rich dude's cotton gin just burned down, which means... Uh, baby's husband's cotton gin is the only one that still works in the whole town. Um, that's why I say that I think this was set just post-Civil War, because they have a cotton gin. That that seems very post-Civil War to me. Uh, so, so he's come to stay at Baby and her husband's house. Um, but wouldn't you know... All of their furniture just got repossessed, except for, like, one bed, which I think that they say it's a crib, but it's 
It's clearly big enough for an adult, so I don't think it actually is a crib. I don't know why they keep saying it's a crib. And, and there's a lot of, you know, romantic tension between Baby and the rich dude whose cotton gin burnt down. Where, you know, she clearly has a very bad relationship with her actual husband. And so that's, that's sort of the conflict is like, here's this guy who seems to kind of like Baby versus her husband who clearly does not, but who she's like promised herself to. Um, and it, you know, that all escalates and, and it, you know, it comes to a head and like Baby's husband is like chasing the guy down with a shotgun and, and gets arrested because he's chasing a guy down with a shotgun, but you know, he was chasing the guy down with a shotgun on his own property, so he's allowed to do that. Yeah, it's... It's... it. The ending is kind of... I hate to say anticlimactic, because I do think it's an appropriate ending, but it is kind of just... It, it is a movie that just kind of stops, right? Things just kind of stop happening, and and that's the end of the, uh, the, the movie. Um, I almost said play, because I was thinking, like, you know... This probably does work better as a play. Like, I would probably rather see this on stage than in a movie. Um, it does mostly take place at one location, but they do move around that one location enough. And they have one or two other locations, so it's not... It's, it's not a bottle movie or anything, but... I just like the story feels like it would work better on stage than in a movie. Um, I I didn't dislike the movie. I I don't want I don't want to give the wrong impression here. I did like the movie well enough, but it's not the best. You know, it's not it's not the best thing I've ever seen. I was comparing it to Lolita earlier. For my money, I think I'd rather watch Lolita. Um, the Stanley Kubrick version. I haven't seen the later version. Um, and even then, I don't really like Lolita that much either, so... Eh, they're, they're, they're okay. They're good. I understand both of them. I understand, like, why people like them, but I don't... I don't think either of them are great movies. Baby Doll does feel pretty out of place for, for Matt Presents, but... You know, I have done some really out-of-place movies. Frankly, The Devils is a little more dramatic than I usually go, so... It, like... It's out of place, but being out of place isn't really out of place either. Like, it's not what I usually show, but I do sometimes show things that aren't what I usually show, so... It's not that uncommon. Yeah, I don't know how much else I have to say about Baby Doll. It's interesting. I understand why some people might like it. If you're like, I don't know, a fan of Tennessee Williams or something. What else has Tennessee Williams written? Because I feel like I've definitely seen some movies based on Tennessee Williams plays, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Is that, is that Tennessee Williams? Hmm... I'll have to look. Yeah, I don't know. There's definitely an audience for Baby Doll, but I'm not really sure I'm it. I don't know that I will ever watch this movie again. But I was glad to watch it the one time. On the other hand, a movie I have seen more than once. I think this is... Uh, I want to say it's my third time, but it might be only be my second. Freaks from Todd Browning. Freaks gets brought up, at least in passing, like every band films week. Is the first Van Films Week I did, like, a Van Film Recommendations video, and one of the films I recommended was Freaks. And then last year I talked in... It was in the Cannibal Holocaust video. Michael and I got on the conversation of Freaks, which I, I feel like I should have mentioned in my video about movies that have become lost due to a ban... Because this movie was about 20 minutes longer, 20 to 30 minutes longer, and those 20 to 30 minutes have gone missing because they were, like, too intense for audiences in the 30s. And to be fair, Freaks is, like, the rare film from the 30s that is still really fucking creepy. 
Yeah, like Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, King Kong. They're good. They have their charm. I would not argue that they're particularly scary movies. Like in the modern era, by modern standards. But sometimes in the 30s, they would make something just fucking wild. Just like some crazy off-the-wall shit. Like, th there were a lot fewer rules back then. You know, and, and I mean, like, like societal rules, right? Like, 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 there was no idea of what a movie should be like. Like, here is what you can show in a movie. But, like, now we've had film for, like, a hundred years. We, we kind of get used to certain things being in a movie. And, like, you flash back to some of the horror movies of the 30s, and they're wild. They're out there. And, and the 20s, even. The 20s as well. There's a lot of really wild stuff out there, and Freaks is one of the wildest. Because it's, uh, it's the story of these circus freaks. Um, the main character is a dwarf or a little person. Still not totally sure what the acceptable nomenclature is there. Um, he, he's a little person, which uh, is not something... I mean, I guess freak shows don't really exist so much anymore, but at the very least, little people are in the circus freak shows a lot less often as compared to, like, some of the others in the movie are, like, conjoined twins or, like, uh, a guy with no arms and legs. Let me tell you, there is no dude cooler in any movie. In any movie, there's never been a character cooler than the dude in this movie with no arms and no legs who sits there and fucking lights a blunt with his mouth. Like, all by himself, he pulls a match out of the matchbox, lights it, and lights his blunt with no arms and no legs. And I'm like, that dude is a fucking baller. No one is cooler than that dude. But yeah, it's, it's a bunch of circus freaks, and uh, the, the little person has a crush on the trapeze artist in the circus, which, you know, a lot of people laugh at him. A lot of people are like, ah, oh, you'll never get with, like, the super hot trapeze artist. Well, you know, the, the super hot trapeze artist happens to find out that the little person is set to inherit a shitload of money. Like, he, he has money. And she's like, hmm. And little he's got a crush on me and he's got a lot of money. Let's run him for everything he's got. So, you know, they she she like pretends to like him and they they I think they get married. I think they do officially get married. At the very least they are engaged to be married. And the there's like this big ceremony where they accept her as like one of the circus freaks. And she, she just, like, she can't handle it, and she kind of spills the beans. She lets them in on, like, like, oh, I don't actually care about you. I was just in it for the money, and, like, your freaks are, like, crazy. Stay away from me. You're disgusting. I don't like any of you. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> they, they, first off, they kill the guy she's been working with the whole time. And then they mutilate her and turn her into a chicken person. <laughs> and... Yeah, it's fucked. And apparently it was more fucked in the original release. It, like, they did, they did something way worse in the original release of this film. That audiences were just like, no, you cannot do that. And they had to cut like 20 minutes of the film to re-release it. Um, the one lady tried to sue Warner Brothers because she said, I think Warner Brothers, yeah, Warner Brothers, tried to sue Warner Brothers because she said she had a miscarriage after watching this movie. <laughs> like, this movie is so fucked up, it gave a woman a miscarriage. I don't think it actually gave her a miscarriage, just to be clear. I, I think that's correlation, not causation, but, <laughs> you know, like... That's that's how freaky this movie was, that people could get away with saying that.
I, I actually think the ending of this movie inspired the ending of Toy Story. <laughs> like, the scene where, like, all the toys, like, like all the deformed toys come up out of the dirt and start messing with Sid. I think that was based on the ending of this movie, where all, like, the freaks are coming after this woman and her, her guy friend. <laughs> like, woof. Yeah, I do like it. It is, I mean, you know, you know me. I, I love any movie about, like, freaks being proud of who they are. Freaks defending their own, you know? I, I love a, a, a good story about freaky people. And there ain't no people freakier than actual circus freaks. So, I, I, that's, like, where the term comes from, I believe. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a, a story, it's a story I have a very emotional connection with, you know, in a, in a very similar way I had an emotional connection with, like, Bride of Frankenstein. I, I talked about it in my review of Bride of Frankenstein, that, like, you know, I, I like these stories about, like, w where, like, the monster is sympathetic, where, like, the, the villain is justified they're just you know someone who's been pushed away by society and they start pushing back you know they're they're like society calls them a monster and they're like okay fuck you i am a monster that's that's the vibe of freaks that's that's what for and and you know it's also about like community about like you know like, like the the freaks they can, it can be lonely to be a freak. You, you know, you're sort of rejected by society, but we accept our own, right? Like, if, if society's going to reject us, then we're going to reject society. We'll make our own society for us. Uh, directed by Todd Browning, who we've talked about before. Uh, director of Dracula, also Mark of the Vampire I talked about. I actually cut out a big section of that Dracula video, because I'm like, I'm talking too much about Todd Browning and the effects Freaks had on his career, when I know, like, two weeks from now I'm actually going to talk about Freaks. So now we're going to talk about it. Uh, Freaks kind of tanked Todd Browning's career. <laughs> like, the way I was talking, like, the Devils could have had a really detrimental effect on Ken Russell's career. It happened to Todd Browning. Todd Browning's career kinda didn't recover from freaks. It, it was a little too controversial, and he, he was never quite as big as he was before freaks. Uh, which I think is unfair, because again, I think this movie's brilliant. Um, I like this movie more than Dracula, okay? I like freaks more than Dracula. It's, it's a better movie than Dracula. It's, it's a movie that, that I think works on multiple levels. Like, like there's a great message to it, but also, it's a movie from the 30s that manages to be continue to be creepy. And maybe it's not as creepy now as it was then. Like, I don't think anyone's going to freak out about, like, having a miscarriage after watching this. But it is still really creepy. It is still really, like, ooh, ooh, that's unsettling. Right? <laughs> which, is, which is hard to do in the... Because, th you know, in the 30s, we don't have... You know, like blood and guts and gore. We, if if you're gonna do horror, you gotta do something really creepy, right? And this is creepy. And frankly, creepy freaks me out way more than like blood and violence ever did, right? A lot of my favorite horror movies are are just like creepy, right? Texas Chainsaw, The Shining. Those are like creepy movies. And that's why I really like them. <laughs> uh, Freaks, it's a great movie from, like, the, the 1930s. If you want, like, good, classic horror movies, this is one of the best. Highly, highly recommend Freaks. Um, last time I asked you what was something, like, your parents didn't really let you watch when you were a kid. Um, I have a video coming out about this. And I actually think it's going to be volume one of a several-part series, but I, I am working on a video about it. I think I'm going to get 
the next episode of Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie show out before that. Because it has been a little while since I did an episode of Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie show. Both of them are recorded. I, I have written and recorded both videos, but I think I'm going to do Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie show first. After that, or Weird Movie Show, I keep forgetting I changed the title. <laughs> um, after that, I'm going to do a video about things my parents wouldn't let me watch as a kid. But just, just as a, a prep for that video, I do talk about Harry Potter. Harry Potter is the last thing I taught, the, the Harry Potter movies. Actually, j just the first one. The first one's the only one I talk about. But I do talk about how I wasn't allowed to watch any of the Harry Potter movies as a kid. Because my parents were very strict and very conservative. Uh, John August says the only thing that uh, he was really not allowed to watch as a kid was South Park. Which kind of makes sense. South Park really isn't for kids. Um, I remember, like, I, I, my dad would be, like, flipping through channels, and I'd see South Park, and I'd be like, Oh, Dad, cartoons! Let's watch cartoons! And he's like, No, you're not allowed to watch that cartoon. And I'm like, Why? It's a cartoon! Because, like, you know, that's the point where it's like, Oh, all cartoons are for kids. South Park is a cartoon. I should be allowed to watch it. And it's a cartoon about kids. So, you know, I should be allowed to watch it. Um, I grew up a little, and I, I had... I had a friend who would talk about, like, oh, yeah, I watch South Park. And he would, like, tell me all, like, the filthy things that happen in South Park. But then when I got older, it turns out all of the things he said about South Park were from the movie. Like, he, he saw the movie and nothing else. He never saw an actual episode, just the movie. Which is actually a little ironic when you watch the movie. Because <laughs> that's kind of what the movie's about, is, like... Kids who are too young to be watching South Park, watching South Park. I love that movie, by the way. I love the South Park movie. More than I think I like any episode of South Park. It's, it's a real hit or miss show for me. When they do hit it, they hit it out of the park. I love it when South Park hits. But they got a lot of misses. Um, the police are coming to get me for, for watching South Park. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Yep, they're, they're here for me. Yeah, they, they caught me. I watched South Park without my parents' permission. Yeah, I like the South Park movie. Wouldn't show it to kids, although um, John, John says he was smart enough not to say any of the curse words he heard on South Park. So, you know, that it's, it sounds to me like he, he was probably mature enough to watch it when he did. So, you know, that's the smart way to do it, you know? Talk to your kids. Make sure they're mature enough to watch the things they're watching. You know, don't just ban shit. F blanket. Yes, I'm telling you how to raise your own kids. My parents did a bad job. Learn from their mistakes. Um, so this week, my question for you is... What is a sequel you really like that doesn't really seem to get the praise that the original movie did? Right, like, like you like the first movie, and you like the sequel a whole lot, but no one else seems to like the sequel as much as they like the first movie the way you do, you know? Because, because, uh, we're, I'm gonna show one of them. Tonight I'm showing the Dracula sequel, Dracula's Daughter. Um, which I think, at, at least, at the first time I saw it, I'm like, yeah, I like this about as much as I like Dracula. Maybe a little less, but I don't think it's as good as Dracula. But I really liked it the first time I saw it. I might change my mind after this viewing, but I, I like it about as good as the original Dracula. I, I don't think it gets enough credit. We're going to watch uh, the next movie in the Hammer Dracula series. Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Christopher Lee returns as Dracula. So, Dracula, Prince of Darkness. And then we're going to watch... Another Hammer classic, The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, a kung fu vampire movie. I'm very here for it. I'm very excited for this one. Uh, those are the three movies I'm going to talk about next time. I'm going to show those tonight, talk about them next time. Until then, uh, have a nice day.